Hello guys, David Voth here. It's another beautiful day in Alabama. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, I turned on Facebook today and in my feed I see this picture. Now, most of you probably don't know what this picture is, but well, you probably could maybe make out that that's Jesus in the middle and there's two, the two robbers or thieves were on his right hand and his left hand. Of course, one of the robbers ends up repenting and saying, take me with you to paradise. So in the picture, now this is a Jehovah's Witness illustration in their watchtower or one of their books. I don't even remember. I think it might have been in Paradise, uh, the pink book, the Paradise Lost or something, uh, uh, from what I'm hearing here. But it, um, it's interesting. I, I didn't think about it way back when, when I probably saw this picture as a young man. But notice that only the bad robber, the one who did not believe in Jesus, didn't go to paradise with the Lord, had a beard. Jesus is clean shaven, no hairy chest, no hair on his armpits or anything. I guess they just shave your, you know, back then Jesus and his disciples just shaved their entire bodies, right? But they let their hair kind of grow a little bit. And that's kind of like, it looks a little infeminate, you know, and, and there is certainly a lot of this pedophilia talk going on with Jehovah's Witnesses and some of the priests and some religions and stuff. So I don't know if they're just trying to uh, insist upon men not having beards because they're trying to push this one world government, this infeminate men and women taking over and being the boss or something. There's no unity or fellowship or equality, but they literally, I think, want men now to submit and become feminine. But, you know, that wouldn't surprise me, of course, because I didn't know at the time, but you see, they made this Bible translation, and they call it the New World Bible Translation. And they kept talking about the New World Order, and it never dawned on me at that time that we were at the head of this push, putting pamphlets and watchtowers all over the world, you know, trying to convince people that the New World Order was coming. Now, way back when, the Watchtower was actually created and financed by Rothschild, you know, uh, Charles Taze Russell, who started this organization back when it was the Bible students, they weren't, they weren't called Jehovah's Witnesses. Charles Taze Russell wasn't not nearly as bad as the Jehovah's Witnesses have become. They still celebrated Christmas, Christmas and all these other things at that time, birthdays, but they got real fanatical as time went on, but Back in those days, Charles Taze Russell was financed by the Rothschilds. He wrote letters to the Rothschilds, and he was definitely a believer in Zionism. And in fact, the entire reason for the Watchtower was, remember, it was called Watchtower's um, Zion, announcing Jehovah's kingdom, Zion's Watchtower. Now, the Watchtower is a symbol of I guess the anointed Christians throughout time getting up on their watchtower and waiting and watching for Zion coming back to the world. And they believed it was literal and it, that Israel would be restored. This They started this in 1864 and started teaching it. And, and sure enough, in 1917, Israelites started going back to Palestine. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses were definitely proclaiming Zion's return and Jehovah's kingdom, this God of vengeance. But I never understood it at all when I was a Jehovah's Witness. But Charles Taze Russell himself had a beard. Most of those individuals promoting Zionism at that time did. I mean, uh, Darwin had a beard. Remember Freud with his big beard and Karl Marx? Well, they all had beards, you know, including Charles Taze Russell announcing Jehovah's kingdom and Zionism. You know, Charles Taze Russell was one of these, you know, I don't know, he's a billionaire, but he was a millionaire. He owned this big company. I don't know what the name of it was. Something like Woolsworth or, you know, like modern day Walmart kind of thing. And he used that as, I don't think it was really used as collateral. He sold it and, used, and took the money and bought printing presses, and then he needed uh, a big building and all kinds of help from Mr. Rothschild and the Rockefeller. So across the street from the United Nations 
in Brooklyn, Mr. Rothschild financed the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society and they built the great watchtower that is so famous there across the Brooklyn Bridge. It's in one of the most expensive, coveted ports in all of the world, right there in New York City on, you know, on, in the bay. So it had access to the oceans and they spread the gospel, but not of Jesus Christ, but of Jehovah. And going back to his vengeful ways and hate. And evidently, they were kind of, what do you call it, maybe like a double agent. So on one hand, they're promoting Israel and Zionism and so forth. But yet they started talking a lot about this thing called the New World Order and making Bible translations called the New World Order and and uh, promoting all of this New World Order and, and demanding that at some point after Charles Taze Russell died, you know, they changed the whole scope of their teachings and they they stopped believing in Zionism supposedly. But of course, they're not really. They're just using people and their beliefs and trying to tug at their heartstrings because people believed in in this Zionism at that time, but their real goal, you see, in the New World Order is not, it's not really to bring back any kind of religion. Because most of these people were atheists, but it was to bring a New World Order and in feminism, you know, feminism and, and the death of the male ego and, uh, you know, transgenderism and everything else. Take a look at this picture, guys, and you'll see what I'm saying. So, I want to read, first of all, I want to just read a little bit of the comments here to let you guys kind of see, you know, what was happening here. And then um, I want to talk a little bit about why they disfellowship me, this organization. And so take a look at this and I'll get back to you guys. See below, Jesus as he first appeared in 1930 without the beard. This is insane, as is their Gnostic doctrine. Well, actually, it's not really a Gnostic doctrine at all. If it were, it might be closer to the truth. It looks like Jesus shaved his chest and armpits, too. Subtle. Jesus with pecs. I remember this from the Paradise book. Those gay JW artists are at Bethel had a field day. Yep. Robber to the left is kind of homoerotic in some sense. I mean, look at his loincloth. How stylish and centered it is compared to Big J and the other robber. Also, that left robber's chest is really something. I bet that guy were lifting some heavy iron in his spare time. I remember that illustration. Sadly, so do I. Was it in the old peachy-colored Paradise Regained book and thingy? That had some batshit crazy ones as well, with people falling down chasms that had opened up to swallow the wicked at Armageddon. Wicked because they did not recognize that loving G. Huber guy who was chucking them down the chasm. What a guy. I think it was that one XX. That one. <laughs> kiss, kiss, I guess. I don't know how to... I don't know all these abbreviations. White. Hmm. Oh, a white man. Notice the criminals are wearing nappies while Jesus has got a skimpy sarong. The real Jesus would be so upset he was dishonored in this way. But it is Watchtower's doing, as usual. Congrats to those of you who, like me, have fled this hugs to you. The bearded bad guy also has a hairy chest. Notice the loincloth of Jesus. Why is it different? Were the two of them shaved every day? The villain who believed in Jesus was just as without a beard, not the other criminal. He didn't believe in Jesus either. He looked unmaintained. I remember this picture from my younger days. Isaiah prophesied his beard was pulled out by his accusers. Oh, so I guess Jesus did have a beard. Hmm. I'm so glad I have worked up from this horrible cult. It's definitely so evil. We are definitely going down. They are all war diapers. Then I wrote, I saw this um, post on Facebook and uh, I couldn't help 
kind of chime in here because I thought that was pretty interesting. I hadn't seen the the picture and it kind of brought back to mind these illustrations they used to use in the watchtower. Um, you know, as a kid, we're sitting here watching these people dying and the cities crumbling and the mountains falling down. And we thought, oh yeah, God's coming to destroy the wicked. And it seemed normal. It seemed okay. But I never really thought about it. I mean, like this God that we believed in was coming to destroy the entire world, right? We're all wicked. And it made sense, I guess, because that's what I was taught from birth. But it was very, very, um, you know, gross. It was, um, it, it was disgusting. I don't know. There was a word that I'm thinking that it was, and I can't think of the word. But, um, it, it's really ridiculous what people can believe. But, you know, I understand why they believe it. I mean, of course, the Old Testament God, Yahweh, was very evil. Jehovah, they call him. And I guess they just couldn't, you know, people just can't understand how this Old Testament is different than the New Testament. They never grasped these teachings. But it's interesting how people could believe, even if they thought the Old Testament was God. It's amazing how so many people gravitate to that. But I, I wrote, I was disfellowshipped at 18 because my father grew a beard. I lost every member of my family and all friends. Interesting catch, friend. And Patrick writes, Why were you disfellowshipped as a result of your father growing a beard? That's unusual. And I wrote, He was one of the anointed an overseer. Long story, but we all walked into the Kingdom Hall one Sunday, missing in. My dad had started growing a beard in North Idaho. They shut the meeting down and shunned us, whole family. One year later, my mother had a nervous breakdown. We weren't allowed back into the regular fellowship, even though many didn't agree. This went on for years. My family all drifted away and at 17, they convinced me in another congregation a thousand miles away in California to get baptized. Then they made up some stuff that wasn't true and disfellowshipped me and my father. They said it was because we would not accept that beards were wrong, even though they could give me no scriptural reason. There is much more to the story, but it was a huge event back in JW history about 1975. Yeah, that was... The story, I guess, in a nutshell. There's the picture. Very interesting. Something that I'm noticing as I'm looking at this now is Jesus doesn't even have hair on his chest or under his arms or anything. He's completely clean-shaven, like, and he definitely looks very infeminate. Well, I mean, you know, um... I guess in some ways. And, but, but yeah, and they're wearing diapers. Like, that's really crazy. But notice that they kind of had shorter hair. They weren't long. They, they were clipped. I remember the Jehovah's Witnesses used to say that they used to clip their hair or take a rock and beat their hair off, you know, with a rock, clip it that way, because they didn't have scissors or barbers. And so people probably had hair that was... It, 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 they said it should be a short hair. We ought to have short hair, not long hair. Uh, never mind that Jesus was a Nazarene, a Nazarite priest, and they were never allowed, like Samson, to ever cut their hair. But they ignored that. And so they say that the apostles and Jesus wore their hair clipped. But not real short, because they didn't have razors, and they didn't have clippers. They just had scissors or some kind of knife that they'd cut their hair. So they said, we ought to have our hair clipped short, which is contrary to even Jewish law. However, this is what they told us. But you see, and, and all my life, I grew in, growing up, they never said you weren't allowed to wear a beard publicly, but I didn't, I don't know if I noticed it, but all the pictures always showed the disciples and Jesus with shorter hair than most people ever saw Jesus. And with being clean shaven all the time. And I, and I never noticed this. But what's really interesting is that the bad guy, the bad thief, does have a beard. And he's even got hair on his chest. 
He's like a thug, you know, a tough guy, a manly man, and he's a bad guy. See, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize they were doing this. But it's, it's interesting to see this now. And oh boy, oh boy, there is so many things that, that we could talk about. I'm sure a lot of you are probably thinking, oh, I don't, first of all, I don't believe they, they disfellowshipped you, Dave, for growing a beard. Or, or your father growing a beard. They disfellowshipped you for your father growing a beard? Yes, they actually did that. You know, I don't have it recorded. They don't allow you to record the meeting that the elders, the three elders come and they disfellowship you. So, but in that meeting, I specifically said to them, you know, what is going on here? You need to tell me exactly why I'm being disfellowshipped. And the man, the elder said to me, Dave, if you can tell us or show us any Watchtower article or Watchtower publication that says that it's all right to wear a beard, we'll, we won't disfellowship you. But you can't do that. And I said, well, actually, the Watchtower has said that the, in so many ways. Even Jehovah's Witnesses have never denied that Jesus wore a beard, Moses wore a beard, all the apostles probably wore beards. And that, you know, you're just, I, I said, you're, you're confusing styles. We're not supposed to follow fads, worldly fads, but a beard is not a fad or style. And the Watchtower had even said this. A beard is a, a particular way you wear your hair. It had nothing to do with morality. Um, nowhere in the Bible does it ever say a, a person is a bad person for not wearing a beard or for wearing a beard in the New Testament. Of course, in the Old Testament, which we're not under any law, as Christians, we're free in the grace of Christ. And we're not under any law. But in the Old Testament, under the law of Jehovah, you were required to have your, never to cut the locks, the side locks of your hair. And of course, a lot of Orthodox Jews today uh, know that verse well. And so they, they, because it's translated side lock, they have these little curly side locks, like little goldie locks, right? But that's not what the Hebrew says. It means the sides of your hair. Or the ends of your hair. In other words, don't cut your hair. Israel in the law was never to cut their hair. It's not well known in Judaism or Christianity because they've been covering it up. But that's a law and we're not under that. Now there were scriptural reasons to shave your head when you were under a vow or for some reason. But, but, um, Scripturally, if you were not under some kind of priestly vow, you had to have long hair. That is what the scripture teaches. But it, it's it's neither here nor there what the Old Testament teaches. As I said, we're in, in Christ and we're free in Christ and we're not under any law. But I think it's interesting that Jehovah's Witnesses, it's kind of a, a the, the epitome of religion when they start making their little edicts and their paper bulls from their headquarters and de de start declaring they're the vicar of Christ. Or, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses said for years they're not a religion. And, and they, you know, they would condemn the Catholics because they had a pope and, oh, we didn't do that. And and we just had a, an elder arrangement. Uh, well, they actually do that. They're liars. But they call it the faithful and wise servant. So instead of calling themselves, you know, they've got some king that tells everybody what to do, they say, no, we're doing what Jehovah wants us. This is Jehovah's organization. We're just following the Bible. Well, of course, they were following men who were interpreting the Bible for them. And these people who were interpreting the Bible did not understand the scriptures. But this is the kind of thing that, that I was exposed to growing up. Subliminal teachings. They never wanted to come out and state things that they knew were unscriptural, but privately they taught these things and they literally would disfellowship you. Many people were disfellowshipped from Jehovah's Witnesses for having their hair too long or their sideburns too long or they were um, their beard, they had a beard, they were not allowed to wear a beard and to this day Jehovah's Witnesses don't grow, grow beards and you know why that actually is? It it might be because they're very infeminate and so forth. They, they had these teachings and, and all this pedophilia going on, but I think more it was because they were a priesthood in the latter days. They were 
it was an, a little modern priesthood, kind of like the Mormons. They got the little priesthood. But they call it the ministry school. You know, they enrolled me in the ministry school when I was six years old. I gave my first public talk when I was six. I used to go to the big conventions and, and, and have parts in that. My father used to speak at these great conventions. And uh, I've, I've always said that probably as many people that ever went to see Billy Graham or maybe more have gone to see my father speak. Uh, my father has gone back to Jehovah's Witnesses. He's one of the, what they call their anointed, which in, you know, is another word for their Christ. You know, we're all supposed to be little Christs in the Bible, but they only have a group of people that are actual Christians or anointed. You know, we're all supposed to be anointed. But they have a little group, and not only that, he was an overseer and an elder, and I think today he's like a traveling overseer or a traveling teacher, or he gives talks all over the place. My father's getting very old, and I haven't seen him for many, 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 many years because they've all completely, you know, shunned me and condemned me. And to them, I'm an apostate because I teach against their religion. So I haven't heard from any of my relatives um, for many, many years. And of course, my mother's passed away. But the reason then that I believe that they are so insistent that people don't have a beard. If you're a Jehovah's Witness, it's because it's not about being a Christian. It's about being someone who's going to go from, um, well, someone who's going to run their business. This little school, this ministry school, they required you to wear a suit and tie, which is not scriptural, and always a white shirt with a dark suit, which again is very much like all the priesthoods everywhere. I mean, Mormons will always wear a white shirt and a black or a dark suit coat because that's their black robe and the white collar underneath. It's their priesthood garb. Jehovah's Witnesses are very, very subtle. They are liars. They say they don't have any priesthood, but they really do. They just call it a ministry school. They just change all the words. So they're, they're bringing up this whole millions of people putting in a ministry school and teaching them what? How to be a Christian? How to be love others and feed the hungry? No. They teach them how to speak before crowds, how to be in charge of other people, to take orders, how to uh, never lie and be so honest so they can raise up these individuals to become CEOs and managers of their vast financial system. Jehovah's Witnesses were primarily used for CEOs and businessmen. Mormons were used for that as well. There's, very a lot, there's a lot of millionaires and stuff like that with Mormons as well, but they're more into the FBI and the government running for president and, and, and different offices. Jehovah's Witnesses were never into politics. They were exclusively brought up to be businessmen. And there's some very wealthy businessmen. I personally was this fellowship by the president of AT&T. My father was also this fellowship by this man, you know, before he went back to the organization. So I know many of these elders who were, many of them had chains of restaurants and uh, banks. They owned banks. They were big bankers, you know, big bankers. Millions and millions and millions of dollars had big homes out on the Folsom lake area, these big estates, these beautiful, wealthy, luxurious homes, and they're very wealthy. But, um, so a lot of you think, well, that probably didn't happen. They couldn't possibly have disfellowshipped you, Dave, for a beard. Well, they did. I promise you, that's what they did. And like I said, I wasn't even a baptized member because this all happened when I was 13 with my dad. And so I didn't go to the meetings for a while. I was stumbled, you know. Um, I was only 13. What was I supposed to do? I stayed with my mom and dad who didn't go to the meetings because after about a year of this kangaroo court, as my mother called it, and all of this ridiculousness, mom just said, you know, forget it. I'm not going to go to your stupid religion anymore. And so dad kind of did the same thing. He didn't know what to do. He was sort of uh, stumbled himself. So my dad ended up kind of, you know, falling away and stuff like that. And he didn't go back to the witnesses for some years. And when I went to California, my dad actually was there. And we were in the same town. And I, I didn't live with my dad or have a lot of, you know, association with him. 
because I was, you know, like 16, 17, I was still staying with my, my aunt and my grandma. And so they were taking me to the meetings. I was only 17 and they convinced me to get baptized. Well, unbeknownst to me, they only did it so they could disfellowship me. Because you see, I was always going to the elders. I had this one elder that I would talk to all the time who was like an overseer and he was a younger man and, and you know, I, we were friendly and we talked a lot and, and I didn't know it, but he didn't probably even really like me. He was just, I, I guess he was being told by the other elders that he was supposed to try and convince me to stop talking about the beard. And he was unsuccessful because I kept saying, well, of course, I don't agree that there's anything unscriptural or that there's anything scripturally wrong with with wearing a beard. So they kept trying to tell me, oh, no, 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 you're not supposed to be, you know, wearing a beard. And I kept saying, but you can't show me that in the Bible. So they couldn't disfellowship me because I wasn't baptized. So they coaxed me into being baptized. And then they immediately disfellowshiped me. But they made up all these crazy charges. They said that I was... Uh, apostate because I had out in service one day and I was going from door to door and I had walked up to this church and I'd gone into the church into the not the the sanctuary part where the people sit and go to church but into the um the kitchen where they would have get togethers or whatever they had a big table with some seats around it and I went in and had a public debate with a pastor in a Pentecostal church well, I didn't think there was anything wrong with that. I didn't know that would be in, you know, somehow on, you know, against the religion or something. I thought I was just doing what I was supposed to do. Well, they said that was apostasy because I went into another church. And uh, they said, now, did you do any other sins? And I guess, you know, I, cause see, at the time, I thought, well, these brothers are trying to help me. So they want to know what's going on in my life. And if there's any, have I ever done anything wrong? I'm like, okay, let me see. So I said, well, I drank a beer. Well, I was just trying to find some, you know, something, because that's what they were asking me. And so I said, yeah, I, I drank a beer. I didn't say I got drunk, because I didn't. I mean, I probably had been drunk once or twice in my life. I don't remember. I mean, you know, it happens. But, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses drink beer and wine, and they do get drunk. They kind of use it as one of those things where they don't say anything as long as you don't publicly go around drunk. But if they want to, they can use that against you to disfellowship you. So they disfellowshiped me, they said, for, well, they never really told me when they disfellowshiped me, but I was told through the grapevine, right after I was disfellowshiped, that I was actually disfellowshiped for apostasy. So the only thing I can think of is because I went into that church building, they had marked that down as apostasy. Because I don't think they would have disfellowshiped a, an 18-year-old boy who had just been baptized for drinking a beer. But just... To make it stick, I guess, there were, they had sent these two, I don't know who did it, guys, and I'm not, you know, look, I, it's hard to believe, but it happened. I got this job for some Jehovah's Witnesses It had this chicken place, and I was cooking chicken, and like I said, I was, uh, I think I just turned 18, and uh, so I was cooking chicken, and, and there was two Jehovah's Witness girls there, and they invited me over after work, and when I got there, they drugged me, so... I guess they had gone and somehow they, they knew what had happened and they had accused me of taking drugs, which I did not do. They actually, I believe, drugged my water so that they could have another reason to disfellowship me. And this is what happened. And I wouldn't lie to you guys about any of this. But these people will stop at nothing. They are not Christians. They are very immoral people. The organization. And a lot of the people are just you know, very, um, I don't know, weak and brainwashed individuals. And they'll probably do anything for the organization. Um, that's kind of the way human beings do. And that's why there's so many religions in the world. But this is what they did. And there are so many things that I could tell you. And I have told this story many times before. But I just wanted to jump on here real quick. And, you know, I had had my truck that I have to, I was working on my truck today and I didn't really have time to do a video and I came in and it was kind of getting late and I didn't think I had time to do a video and I thought well and then, then this post came up and I thought well I'll just show people this uh, interesting artwork from the watchtower but yeah if a lot of you if you don't believe that this organization see <sighs> Jehovah's Witnesses themselves they probably believe that they're true Christians. And they probably think that they're doing the kingdom work of 
God, right, around the world and so forth. But unbeknownst to them and myself when I was a witness, they are very New World Order, and I did not know that I was working for the New World Order. They used to talk about, they had these lawyers, and they used to say they were uh, more feared than the ACLU, because any time that somebody would try and sue one of Jehovah's Witnesses, they had their lawyers and would go to court, and they would win. And so they changed a lot of the laws in this country, just like the ACLU, very liberal kind of laws, demanding that, you know, we, we don't have holidays, you know, or we're not required in school to salute the flag or any of these kinds of things, very kind of liberal issues. So a lot of people, I'm, I'm sure, Jehovah's Witnesses that have been in the organization or people that have even left the organization, probably wouldn't realize that the organization is run by Freemasons. Charles Russell did admit in a public talk that he was a Freemason. And what gives it away is the early literature that Charles Taze Russell was publishing had all of the Templar Masonic symbolism. The phoenix bird with the sun, stamped on the books and the crown and the cross, which is the same crown and cross that was the temple, uh, Templar symbol. It's the same one that was used on a lot of the Christian science books that were being published early in uh, the early 1900s. But anyway, I just wanted to show you guys this picture, this artwork in their JW literature. There's a lot more you could probably go and look at. There's There's been a lot of people that are pointing out some of the artwork and, you know, a lot of us didn't even see it at the time. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you guys tomorrow.